So season two of Daredevil is finally out, that means two things. Firstly, it means I'm getting an awful lot less work done, because uh, I'm watching that series. Secondly, it means it's that time of year where I often go around the kitchen to make breakfast with my eyes closed and make a terrible mess. Uh, I'm not Daredevil. However, there is a scientifically sound way in which someone could become more like Daredevil, and I'm going to talk to you about that in this video, because otherwise that would be a very random and somewhat cruel introduction to a video. So, how might one become more like Daredevil? For starters, we're going to do away with becoming blind. That's not our objective here, although there's many ways you could do that if you want to. Instead, we're going to focus on heightening the other senses, and also while we're at it, why don't we heighten sight as well? So, how are we going to do this? Well, it is actually possible through a process called neural plasticity. If you've been reading my blog or watching any of my other videos, which I hope you have, then you should know what this is. It's the brain's ability to create new, crea uh, new connections between nerve cells, even to birth new uh, brain cells through a process called neurogenesis. Essentially, the brain adapts like a muscle, reaches out its tendrils, lays down new connections. This is how you learn new skills, it's how you lay down new memories. And you can also use it to completely develop entirely new skills and to change your very perception of reality. When you're born, your brain is like a blank slate, and through your interactions with the world, you create the specific uh, network of neurons that you have, um, which is called your connectome, and that defines who you are, how you see the world, and if you were raised in a different environment, then you'd have a completely different connectome, and your brain would work in entirely different ways. Uh, and an example of this is if you're blind, raised from birth blind, then you don't develop all the same connections that you normally would do around the visual cortex, but you do develop more connections associated with the auditory cortex and your other senses. And this is just because you're using them more, you're practicing them more, thus you're creating new connections, you're focusing on them more, and yeah, you get super hearing. Of course, you can't dodge bullets like Daredevil can. Uh, in fact, you still need a white cane just to find a way around, in most cases. But there are cases of people who develop their hearing to the extent that they can use echolocation, which is the closest thing to what Daredevil is depicted as doing in the TV series and the comics. So echolocation is the ability to find a way around like a bat. You're sending out sound waves and waiting for them to bounce back to you, just determining the environment around you. It's like sonar. So if you speak and you wait for the echo to come back and the echo takes a long time, that means that you're in a, a wide room. If it bounces back very quickly, that means you're in a small room. So someone with echolocation can make small tick noises and use this to decipher the shape of the world around them. So they don't have as good um, ability to tell what's going on around them, but someone like Ben Underwood, he's one case of somebody who managed to develop this skill to such a degree that despite being blind, he can play football, he can ride a bike, it's insane. And although we might be superior in some tasks, he would stand a better chance of dodging a fist coming from behind him. So the question that someone like me obviously asks because I'm insane is, can someone who isn't blind develop echolocation? And the answer to that is, you know, um, in theory, yes, but probably it's going to be incredibly difficult to get it to that extent. You probably never will, let's be honest. Like, most blind people don't get to that point. There are schools and um, courses, I think, you can go on to develop this kind of ability, but most people never get that far, who are blind, even from birth. So your chances, when you're closing your eyes in the kitchen like me, are slim. So in doing my research to find out how I might accomplish this, I've read some blog posts. Some said to walk around making a whistling noise and purposefully stand close to a wall to learn what that sounds like and gradually move away and notice the difference. And that's fine advice, but it's not gonna help in the long run. It's, it's you know, interesting, but you'd have to do this every single day and it's too contextually sensitive. Just, yeah, it's not gonna make you into daredevil overnight. So what you wanna focus on instead is uh, the next best thing, which is something called sound localization. Now this is something that can be trained. I even know a guy who's improved his sound localization. It's the ability to know where a sound is coming from. And this is useful if, for instance, you're a sound engineer who lays out microphones uh, for recording symphonies or film scores. So what they do is they can tell how far away a sound is and how um, loud it is versus 
the direction it's coming from, etc. And my friend said he would sometimes, because he did a Tonmeister course, which basically is a sound engineering course, he would be blindfolded and people would be around him. They'd make a noise and he had to tell where they came from. And that way he could actually improve his sound localization. And these were people who had no interest in becoming Daredevil. I don't know what's wrong with them. But what you can do then is you can use this just to become better at knowing where you are based on that contextual information. So if you're walking down the street and your eyes are closed, you can hear how far away the cars are. You know roughly how far onto the curb you are or how close to the road you are. I don't recommend walking like this, doing this near a busy road because you will get killed and it will probably be sort of my fault so don't do it. And the thing is you don't need to be actively training this. You can actually just be more mindful of it all the time. Just when you're walking down the road, be more aware of the soundscape. Think about where the sounds are coming from and where they are in relation to the things you can see and feel. The ground underneath your feet, the wind on your face, and the sounds coming in from all directions. Just by being more aware of these things, you're training them. And that's something you can do much more religiously and frequently than just some kind of practice where you're walking around your house with your eyes closed. And it's by being more mindful and aware of your environment, you can start to build a far more cohesive picture of the world around you so that you could, in theory, navigate a little bit better with your eyes closed because the other senses you're now more aware of. Um, and that's actually another big point, um, attention and focus generally because we're actually very bad at it. We tend to be focused on just one thing. We, uh, our attention tends to be on where we're going, what we're thinking about. Often we're very reserved. And in fact, you can watch a video and be completely unaware of something very key happening in it. There's this one video where people are throwing a, a ball between each other and you're asked to watch the ball. When you watch the ball, um, a gorilla walks through. We did this in psychology. Um, we have shown this in a psychology lecture. Uh, a gorilla walks through the crowd and because you're watching the ball, you completely miss the huge gorilla. It's a man in a gorilla costume, obviously, you know, a real gorilla that would end in bloodshed. But yeah, the fact you're watching the ball means you completely don't see the gorilla. So if you want to improve your sight, your sound and everything else, just being more aware is a great idea. And it's very hard to be more aware because you can't remind yourself. You forget you're doing other things and you forget to pay attention to the world around you. So you need little prompts and, you know, something like meditation or mindfulness practice in general can help you to just be more aware of the surroundings and thus more ready as well for if somebody were to attack you. Um, regardless of how good your senses are, you need to be paying attention to them for them to be any use to you. So I said we'd be looking at sight as well. How can you improve your sight? Well, actually the same way that you improve the hearing. Just as there's neural plasticity, um, there's also visual plasticity and you can change um, the density of the photoreceptors um, that in, take in um, light and help you to see. You can actually improve your visual resolution and this is possible because the eyes are, in some senses, the only external part of your brain. So they can develop in just the same way as any other part of your brain through practice. And once again, you can thicken your um, visual cortex and create more connections there just by being more alert to it and more attentive. And this is why that some studies show playing computer games, specifically action games, actually increases your visual acuity. You increase your sensitivity to small dots on the horizon, even your ability to decipher the differences between similar colours, specifically grey in the study. So if you, you know, the same would be true for sports because you're looking at the horizon, you're looking out for the ball, you're trying to be aware of everyone on the pitch. Basically, use it or lose it. And so if you're training yourself in these kind of scenarios where a lot of attention is required, focused on your vision, you can actually develop better vision. Of course, there's a lot more than just visual acuity that impacts your ability to see. You have things like um, the lens itself, your muscles surrounding your eye and your ability to change their strength to um, alter the shape of the lens. You have things like your ability to track things with your eyes, visual tracking. All these can be trained as well, but they require separate things. And if you have some kind of uh, problem with your eyesight, then you know there's only so much that improving your visual acuity can do. I've spoken a lot more about all these things on my blog, uh, a post called How to Train Your Senses Like Daredevil. Very um, novel idea that was. Um, and if you go and check that out, you can learn you know, about nutrition, about exercises for strengthening your nerves, and even how to improve your smell. Uh, that's ironic, because I'm a nosmic, I have no sense of smell. Um, apparently, sniffing your own sweat can increase the number of receptors in your nose and help you to smell better, but it wouldn't do anything for me because, yeah, I can't smell anything, which is weird. And you'd think I'd have heightened senses like Daredevil, but no, I've just got a big nose that can't smell, so thanks for that. But yeah, check that out if you want a lot more detailed information on this. But for now, my take home message is that being more mindful of your surroundings and of your senses can help you to increase the uh, neural density relating to those senses. And this can help you to have 
more awareness of the world around you. Um, and whilst we're on that subject, I also would recommend looking into my post on synesthesia. This is how you can mix senses. Uh, a lot of people are born with synesthesia, that's the ability to, for instance, see sounds as colours or to experience um, letters as colours or, or, for instance, to hear sounds as smells. It's where senses cross over. And as I was talking, cross-modality um, is actually very important. I was talking earlier about how you could use your ability to hear and see the distance of something in order to create a more complete picture of the world around you. That's a type of cross-modality. Synesthesia takes us to the next level and it's got some awesome applications. And studies show that you can train and improve synesthesia uh, just through practice. If you read lots and lots of books where the letters are different colours, eventually you will see those letters as colours by creating the associations and the corresponding neural connections. So read up on that on my website, or there's also a video on it on my channel, which you can check out, so do that. And all these things, they're inputs for the brain. And if you think of the brain like a computer, then the way you hack any system is by looking at the inputs and how you can manipulate those. Your senses are some of the biggest inputs. So there's all kinds of things that you could achieve by uh, improving the senses. Far more than just dodging bullets, daredevil style, you could potentially change the way you actually think. Um, and possibly improve things like memory or pattern recognition uh, through enhanced senses and practicing with them. So yeah, there's a lot to think about here and I'll be posting a lot more on in the future, both videos and blog posts. So if you're interested, stick around. Please like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.